Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are doing well, keeping safe in these crazy times that we live in. Coming back at you with just a little bit of content for you to keep you sane during these lockdown periods. Today we're going to be doing another TrueNAS tutorial and more specifically how to install Plex Media Server on TrueNAS using the plugin system. So what is Plex? Plex is an awesome program that allows you to manage, organize, and stream all of your locally stored media to pretty much any device you own, be that a smartphone, laptop, tablet, or even a smart TV. It runs from your own hardware and supports a wide variety of devices. It can handle pretty much any file format too. And if your device doesn't support a particular file format, Plex can transcode that so it's actually converting the file as it streams down to your device. So for example, if your phone doesn't support the native file format or video codec that your film is in, Plex will automatically convert this to a file format that your phone does understand as it's streaming down to the device. And this process is called transcoding. Plex also supports DLNA. So even if your TV isn't a smart TV, but it does have some sort of wired or wireless connection, chances are it supports DLNA and you can use Plex to stream your media. You can think of Plex like Netflix for all your locally stored media. It just works on everything. But chances are, if you clicked on this video, you already know what Plex is. So let's move into the TrueNAS UI and install Plex. Here we are inside the TrueNAS UI. This is a totally fresh install with the only thing I've done is to create a blank volume. If you're not sure how to install TrueNAS or create a volume, make sure to go back and watch the TrueNAS install video that I did and I'll have that linked up here as well. But the first thing we need to do is to create a place to hold all of our media. And to do that, we're gonna head over to the storage tab and then into pools. You can see here, I have my blank volume called vol1 and then click on the three dots on the right hand side and click add data set. I'm gonna create a new data set called media and click submit to save that with the blank, with the um, default options. And now I have a data set called media. Next thing we're going to do is create a couple of user accounts and groups so that they can access the Samba share that we're going to create later on. Head up to accounts and then into users. And from here, I'm going to create my first user using the add button. Let's give this one a name of Peter. And that's also going to create a group. Click on submit. And I'm going to create a second account called Paul. I'm creating two accounts just so I can show you how this would work in a multi-user scenario. If you only want one account, then you can just create one account. If we head over into groups, on the groups page, you can see I have my group called Paul and a group called Peter, which corresponds to those users we just created. We're gonna create a third group called TrueNAS users. TrueNAS underscore, if I could spell, TrueNAS underscore users. And we're gonna add both of those user accounts we just created to this group. Click on submit. And then on the drop down on the TrueNAS users group, we're gonna click on members. And we're gonna add both of the newly created accounts to the TrueNAS users group. The reason for doing this is that when we come to assigning permissions to our storage later, I can now just assign the TrueNAS users group to the storage instead of having to add each individual user. If you only plan on having one user, then you can just skip this step altogether and just use the default user groups. Next, we're gonna head over to the sharing tab and we're gonna create a Samba share in order to copy our media over to TrueNAS. And on the Windows Shares menu, click on the Add button, and then in the Path, click on the drop down, and we're gonna select our media data set to share as a Samba share. You can change the name if you wish, and just click on the Submit button to save that option. It's then gonna come up and ask us if we want to configure an ACL. Click Configure Now, and then click on Create a Custom ACL. There are many routes you can go with this, and it's definitely, um, up to your personal preference which way you want to go. The way I'm gonna show you how to do it is to add our TrueNAS users group onto the ACL to give those, us those users in that group permission. And then we're gonna restrict everybody else from accessing it. 
So we're gonna leave root as the user and in the group we can select our newly created group. So that was true NAS users, select that from the list and make sure to click on the apply group option. We're gonna remove the everyone ACL from this group. If you want to have everyone access or be able to access your media data set, then just, you can just leave that in and that's no problem. If we go through some of the options, we're gonna change the permission type from, base, from advanced to basic, and we're gonna set full control for the root user, and then we're gonna do the same for the group, because I want my users to be able to copy in data to this um, data set but please feel free to just change these to suit your environment. So I'm gonna allow full control on there. We will come back into these permissions to update them later, but I'll show you that in the next step. In the flags, we also want to set them to inherit. With that said, let's click on save to save that ACL. And now we can copy our media over to our TrueNAS share. Back in Windows File Explorer, I now have some of my absolute favorite movies and TV programs of all time on my desktop. And I'm gonna copy these over to my TrueNAS share that we just created. So we need to just copy these and browse to our TrueNAS share. You can just enter the IP address or the host name of your TrueNAS share. Hit enter and then it's gonna pop up and ask us for our credentials. What was that user I created earlier? Why did I do that? And so I enter the username that I created earlier and click on OK. Now we see our media share is listed. Double click on media and then I'm gonna copy and paste these files over into the media share. Now that our media is copied over, we can head back to the TrueNAS UI and we are ready to install Plex. Head over to the plugins menu and then it's gonna pop up and ask you where you want to store your plugin data. Just click on vol1 because that's the only option I have. On the plugins menu, we have access to quite a large variety of plugins. They're the built-in ones available from iX Systems and if we switch to the community tab, you'll see that we have a whole um, bunch to choose from. But if we head back to the iX Systems one and select the Plex Media Server and then on the right hand side, click on install. Next, we just need to give our plugin a name. I'm just gonna call it Plex and click on the save button. This is gonna download and install the latest version of Plex. This will take a couple of minutes just depending on your connection speed. Once the plugin has successfully installed, you will get the successful message. And you'll notice down at the bottom, it gives you the URL of the admin portal. You can take a note of that, but we don't necessarily need it as we can get it in the next step. Click on close. And then if we head back to the plugins, the first thing we're gonna do is to actually stop the plugin. And you might be wondering why that is. Well, first we need to actually mount our storage to the plugin so that it's accessible. Click on the um, checkbox and then click on stop. And once that's stopped, click on the drop down and click on mount points. In the top right hand corner, click on actions and click on add. And in the source, we want to select our media data set. And then in the destination, we're gonna mount that to the media of the Plex plugin. Click on submit. And then we can head back to the plugins menu and click on start. Click the drop down again, and then we're gonna click on manage. And this is gonna open up a new URL. Your one will probably ask you to sign in to a Plex account if you're not already signed in. If you don't have an account, just go ahead and create one. It just takes a couple of seconds. Once you're signed in, it'll land you at this page. Click on got it, and then it's gonna come up and ask us if we want to have a Plex pass. If you want to subscribe to a Plex pass, you can go ahead and do so, but I'm just gonna click the close button for now. If you want to change the name of your Plex server, so how it appears, you can do that here. If you have multiple instances of Plex, maybe at different locations, you can set different names for those. I'm gonna go ahead and change the name here and I'm gonna untick this box. If you want to leave that box ticked, you can do that as well. Click on next and it's gonna ask us to add libraries to our Plex server. Click on add library and I'm gonna add the first one as a film and then I'm gonna click on the language to change the language and then click on next and we need to browse for our media what's going to happen here is if we click on browse media and then we click on the 
um, media folder, you'll notice it's actually missing. And it's down at the bottom here and it's grayed out. And that's because we haven't assigned any permissions to our Plex plugin. So it can't actually access that media that we um, mounted into our jail. Let's go ahead and change that. So if we cancel this, and then cancel this and we're just going to click on next to finish the setup and click on done then head back to the true nas ui and we're going to click on jails and then on the plex jail click on the drop down and click on shell this will open up a terminal into our plex plugin and we're going to type id plex and that's going to give us the user id of the user that the jail is running as and in this case it's 972 so make sure to take a note of that 972 head back to the storage tab and then on the media data set edit the permissions and what we need to do is to add a new acl for that user id or the 972 click on add acl item and then in the who change that to user and then in the user enter that unique id so 972 for the plex one in the acl type leave that as allow and the permission type as basic and change it to read only so this will give the plex id read only access into our media storage we can click on the apply permissions recursively and click confirm and then click on the save button and now if we head back to the Plex plugin, we don't need to restart here. Click on the more button and then click on the plus button under your account. Click on films and then change the language if you need to do so. Click on next. And then this time when we browse for our media, you'll notice that the media folder is um, now showing. You can either use that to browse or you can just type it in manually at the top if you know the location. Click on add library. And then I'm going to add a second library here. I told you to remove those little kids films and add in the manly ones. Well, wow, this is awkward. Anyways, that aside, let's go back and add in our second source. We click on TV programs and click on next. And this time we browse to the same place, but we're going to choose the TV shows. Click on add library and that will now add in all my favorite TV programs. <laughs> Anyways, you'll notice that there's a spinning icon on screen here and that's because Plex is now going through and scanning all of your files and adding in the metadata and just generally organizing them into something that makes sense. So that'll take a while to go through just depending on how big your library is. You can also pin these sources so that they appear on your home screen using the three dots and clicking on the pin button. And this time when we head back to the home screen, they will be displayed. So that is how to install Plex. There's a couple of other settings I would suggest changing. If you head up to the top right, clicking on settings, and you'll want to probably enable this show advanced settings. Some of the settings I would suggest changing are under general. You can change the name here and they'll also show you if there's any updates. I would also head down into the library and I would change these settings to um, enable scanning of your library so you don't have to go in and manually scan. Click on the save changes button and then go to the network tab. And the setting I would change here is to add in my um, network subnet so that I don't have to enter credentials every time I connect to Plex from something that's already on my network. I trust everything on my network, so it's just a bit of an inconvenience to have that setting listed. So I would typically go in and add my network subnet in here and click on save changes. Some of the other settings you want to check are under transcoder. If you don't have very powerful hardware, you can set the quality of the transcoding using these options here. If you have semi-decent hardware, you can probably leave that as automatic. Head down to the DLNA menu and you'll want to enable that DLNA server if you want to use devices that don't necessarily support um, the Plex app. Click on save changes. And then one final thing I also like to do, but it's up to you if you want to do this, is to head up to online media sources 
And then I typically disable the um, built-in Plex online media sources because they don't offer anything that I actually like or I use. So I just get rid of them just to keep my home screen tidy. You can go in and disable all the built-in ones like the movies and TVs, web shows, news, podcasts, and music. I don't use any of these, so I just like to keep things clean. Click on save changes. One final thing you want to do is probably head down to the remote access menu. I'm going to have mine disabled just because of the way my network is set up, but you can enable the remote access here if you want to allow Plex to be visible from outside of your network and use it on the go. But other than that, if we head back to the home screen, I now have all my favourite TV shows and movies um, listed in Plex and they're ready to stream down to any device. Oh, one final thing I forgot to show you is if you head back to the True NAS page and then we go back into plugins and you can actually select the Plex plugin and click on the update button. This will actually run through and download and install the latest versions of Plex if there are any to do so and that's just how you keep Plex up to date. It might not necessarily be the latest and newest version of Plex as is available on their website, but it's the latest version that's in the Jails catalogue. That should be everything you need to know about installing Plex on TrueNAS using the Plugins and Jails system. The plugin system really does make it easy to install software in just a couple of clicks. If you have any other topics you want me to cover on TrueNAS or anything else you'd like to see, let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to leave this video a like and get subscribed if you aren't already and let me know your feedback as always. Thank you for watching and I will catch you in the next video.